folks, we're back for video number three in our series for the Gen Con 2014 preview. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. How you doing? Today we're starting with G, and we'll be going forward and seeing how many games we can get done there. We will uh, start the clock. Here we go. With G, by the way, if you're wondering what, how we pick the games we talk about stuff, we mentioned that in our A video. Anyhow, Gale Force 9 games, who had one of the hottest games last year, Firefly. Firefly. Holy moly, that was that hot last That's year. That's sold by hotcakes. <laughs> and they're going to Firefly the game Blue Sun, uh, the, the expansion for that. So I'm sure that will sell like hotcakes. Mm -hmm. Then they have the Sons of Anarchy, Men of Mayhem. Very interesting. Will I, this one sell? I don't know. You know, it's... Um... They had the Spartacus game, which was their first kind of big hit. And, and by the way, they have a new expansion for that, too. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, Firefly. I don't know. if the, Will this theme be as popular? I'm, I'm leaning towards no, but I'm hoping they do well. The, I've seen the components that are inside the box. A lot of cool pieces. Yeah. So. Then we have Game Sloot, which is kind of an umbrella for a whole pile of different companies. And so they're going to have Alien Frontiers, uh, Keyflower, and Shadow Rift. Um, and then they gave us a whole list of games, and we're not going to show you every game they're talking about. We'll just pick some of the ones I think that they'll do well. There's some that they might be showing, which actually are the, the most interesting one. Princess of the Dragon Throne, mm -hmm. I think, will be a big game if that one gets there in time. And maybe even Chaos and Alchemy and King's Forge, because right. both those games have a lot of things. The card game of Oz. Mm -hmm. There's been a lot of buzz about that on Board Game Geek. Um, I'm sure that some people will be interested in seeing that one. Um, it looks like they'll be carrying um, the Dice Hate Me games because I don't see that Dice Hate Me has a booth. So then Viva Java Dice. Oh, which is the one I'm looking forward to pretty much the most from the list. Viva Java, the dice game, I, I definitely want to check out. No, it's Viva Java, the game, the dice, the game. dice game. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm actually looking forward to their, their marrying Mr. Darcy. Right. Because that's a cool little theme, and that might be good. Um, they also have, uh, let's see, uh, a duel betwixt us, which I had. I just did a review of that. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of different games coming from Game Sleuth. Then we go on to Golden Egg Games. They have Atlas Duel for Divinity. Oh, what a, what a, a wonderful title. Looks like you create your own <laughs> god creation and fight someone else out. A two-player kind of... Go at each other sort of game looks interesting. Greater Than Games, which made their, their debut at Gen Con several years ago with Sentinels in the Multiverse, which has gotten smashed things. Um, they will be showing off, but not for sale yet, the Sentinels Tactics mm -hmm. um, game, the, the board game version. And then they'll have Galactic Strike Force, which came out a couple uh, conventions ago. I believe PAX was where that one debuted, but a space... Uh, it's not quite a space version of Sentinels of the Multiverse, but it's the same feel. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Gray Fox Games, uh, which is a, a branch of, of cool stuff, will have Conquest of Spiros, mm -hmm. uh, which is a game about... It's like an area control game, but by winning different things, you'll get, you, you play cards to put the, the pieces out. And some things you get out will give you special abilities and such. Cool. Griggling Games will have Quartermaster General, and Destination Neptune. I'll have reviews of both of those out this week. Quartermaster General's about, well, being a quartermaster in World War II. Destination Neptune is about flying around and um, spending fuel and money to get bases on different planets for points. That looks very cool. I'm excited to play that one, Destination Neptune. The next company, we're not going to talk a lot about their specific games, but I am going to say that you should stop by their booth, and that is Haba, H-A-B-A. Um, USA, because I don't believe they've been at Gen Con before. Definitely first time they're there. But if you have a young child and you walk by their booth and don't stop, then you shouldn't go to Gen Con. You're a monster. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely check them out. Haba is one of the premier game, uh, game um, publishers for children's games. And some people would say the premier. Absolutely. And they will have not only some new titles... Some, including what they're calling the uh, My First Game Ever series, which are very, very simple games for little, little kids. Yeah, but some of the games uh, you, you like, you know, yeah, yeah, some of the games work for adults. You yeah, never know. Yeah, they have some of those, which is very simple games, and then they have some of their old classics they'll have there. They'll have Dancing Eggs, and they'll have uh, Animal Do you think animal. they'll have Dancing Eggs? They, they said they would, yeah. Buy Dancing Eggs. I yeah. still have my copy of that. It's An Animal Upon Animal, very fun. Oh, yeah. Game. So... 
check them out. It's it's their first year there, and I, for one, I'm excited that they're there. Yep. Hairbrain Schemes. Now, they're making a miniatures game, and I wouldn't really talk much about it. Go Marcana. But it is interesting in that it's going to be a game where you have a stylus where you'll be able to, like, touch terrain and touch pieces and things. And it does the stats for you. So you don't have to figure out, oh, I need a plus one here. It How well this huge. will work, I don't know. But I, it'd be nice if a lot of games did that. Could you imagine playing HeroScape where you just post a piece? All right, roll four dice. You have plus three. You know what I mean? You That's just the, talk to the pen. Destroy him. <laughs> then a piece melts on the board. <laughs> IDW Games, um, which is kind of in, in joint with Pandasaurus. They're actually not going to be selling any games there, I think. They're just showing them off. But they will be showing off the expansion for uh, Machi Koro, the dice game that's taking the world by storm, the harbor, and Dia Monsters, which right. lo looks like a, a, it's a Japanese import or reprint. Where you're playing cards from your hand, trying not trying to have the highest card, but not the same card as other people. Right, so a double thing kind of game. Looks cute, and again, I always perk my ears up for something from a little publisher from Japan. They just put out really interesting stuff. And now for another company that makes a big splash at conventions, Yellow. Okay. Well, obviously, Twin Tin Bots, they brought that over. I think that's a fun little programming robot game. Very good. The expansion for Titanium Wars Confrontation. So I wonder if that means you're going to be able to attack each other in this one more. Uh, I think they include more of everything is the idea. It's one of those expansions that has a little bit more of everything. And uh, is this the? F I I'm fairly certain this is the first expansion they put out for Titanium Wars. Titanium Wars came out last year at Origin. So yeah, it's kind of odd that they waited this long. Yeah. But, huh? But that's good. You know, if, if you like the game, finally there's more stuff for you. Then uh, Friday the 13th, which if you glance at the box, you think is Freedom and Freeze because it's green <laughs> and has a cat on it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't sound like a scary game. sounds like a fun little game. That's actually out already. Yeah, and it's actually a reprint of the old Reiner Knizia Poison game. Oh, is it? It's what it is. Yeah. Oh, well, which was also reprinted before this as, as Baker's, Baker's Dozen. Dozen, yes. Which was a donut-themed game, which I really like that theming. Yeah, big Although it didn't make as much sense. The poison actually made sense. You were throwing poison in the different pots. Right, right, right. And this... Um, oh, this is a great I'm card game. I'm not sure about the theme this time, but it'll make for cute, interesting artwork, so who cares? It's basically an abstract game anyway. But yeah, it's the same game as Poison, the same game as Baker's Dozen, Friday the 13th. Yeah, it's a great card game. I love it. I can't tell you to go buy Zombies 15 because apparently it's already been sold out. The, the printing, the Kickstarter backers, which is a bummer. It's also about eighty dollars. Something is it? like that. Ah, I was really pumped about it, though. Ah, it's, it's a lot. I love these timed games that are mm -hmm. frantic and fun, like Escape. Um, and then their their third game in their little kids line. Tales and Games, The Hare and the Tortoise. The first one was Three Little Pigs, then Baba Yaga. Mm -hmm. Now we have The Hare and the Tortoise. Um, and it looks cute. It's actually a reprint of a game that had been out, and they acquired it, cleaned it up a little bit, and they're putting it out in that same universe, uh, in that same line, anyway. And uh, for me, I think this is finally the one that might do it. It's a little racing game, but each character has a power. And depending on how many cards you assign to them as you play a card, and they move, play a card, and they move... Um, you think, or are you saying you think this one will have legs outside of being a kid's game? I think so. I think this, this is something I would enjoy, because you're basically playing cards on the table, and once you hit a threshold, the characters move, and they move depending on how many cards they got. So one character might move a single space, but if they hit four cards, they jump woof, way up. And so each character is different. It looks really neat. Check it out if, if you like racing games, or you got a little one, and they like racing games. It looks great. All right. Then Night of the Grand Octopus. Um, <laughs> yes, that's right. Uh, this one, well, hello, ladies. This one looks so bizarre. Um, the cover looks neat. It's it's yellow artwork is always amazing. Um, yeah, they hired the best artists. And uh, but it looks like a very light game, kind of uh, bluffing, you know, simultaneous card selection kind of game. Looks okay. Here's the deal, though. We just mentioned all these games. People are going to be pushing them out of the way because they're going to go for one game, and that's King of New York. What? A game which they told us last year was called King of Moscow. Apparently, somewhere along the line, there was miscommunication there. <laughs> but King of New York um, is a 
not a, it's, what would you call it? It's, I almost want to say it's King of Tokyo 2.0. It's a sequel. I would definitely say it's, it's a sequel. It's definitely a sequel. Yeah. Here's the deal. We've played it. We like it. We can't tell you much more about it yet, but our, re our full review of it will be going up next Thursday. First day of Gen Con, our review of King of New York will go up, so you can check it out there. There you go. Uh, but we, I can tell you this. I really like it. I like it better than King of Tokyo. That's all you can say. <laughs> well, you can say if you like it or not. I do like it quite a bit. <laughs> so, so get a copy. <laughs> all right, that's yellow. Now we're at Imbalance Games. They don't really have a new game. It's Titans Tactics, mm -hmm. which is a game which you have these, these guys on the board and you're playing different cards of different colors. Depending on the color card, depends what power they use and things. Okay. Um, pretty interesting game, but this is their first time at Gen Con. Cool. Indie Boards and Cards will be there with the Dragon Slayer mm -hmm. um, game um, and also the new Coup Reformation. Very cool. Um, and Coup is a very, very popular game. Yeah, this, this is... This is one of those games that when they re uh, they they acquired it and, and threw it back up on Kickstarter for people that didn't get the original Japanese version, it just blew up. So very very popular game, um, a little bit like uh, Masquerade or Masquerade, which we talked about um, in one Masquerade. of our earlier, earlier videos. Ba -na 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 -na. Okay, sorry. Every time I hear that word, I think that song. <laughs> um, okay, then indie game developer. Now indie game developer is a group of people, I think almost like Game Crafter. Okay. Um, but maybe not so, but they get together and so they'll have one booth with a bunch of independent publishers. Interesting. The one game there is Bunny Money Gunny. Think of it as, um, as some kind of paper, rock, scissors type thing. Okay. Are you gonna do the bunny, the money, or the gunny? Um, I don't know, I just think the name is hilarious. That sounds cool, I, I, I always like that, the, the little guy getting together with some other little guys and trying to do something interesting. I'll check it out. Jasco Games. I know nothing about Mega Man, the board game, it's but Mega it's Man. Mega Man, the board game. So that's got to be a little interesting, right? It's either going to be like, oh, this is fun, or I'm going to be like spitting at it like, It'll, well, yeah, ah, I don't ruin one of my favorite themes. Yes, yes. It'll be Candyland rethemed. Or awesome. Oh, okay. I guess there actually is the option that it could just be it. A decently okay game. <laughs> it's not or, like they have. They, they don't have only the two options. It better be amazing. But I'm hoping it's good. I, I, I'm a big fan of Mega Man, even though I can never beat several of the bosses in the games. But anyhow, all right. Lamplight Games. They have two new games called Space mm. Space Junk and Nautilus Industries. I know Space Junk is a a game in which you're racing out in space and gathering trash and. It's, it's, it's sort of a storytelling game, though, from what I understand. And uh, it's very silly and very chaotic, and uh, it looks very light, like a very, very light game. I've heard it's pretty random, and if you, you really have to buy into the storytelling aspect of it. But it looks interesting, and uh, it's uh, irreverent and tongue-in-cheek, you know, with all its references. Nautilus Industries is going to be a game where you, the, you're going down to the bottom of the floor and trying to dig up things in with the your ocean, machines right? yeah. in the oceans. Mm -hmm. So that one sounds like it might be heavier, but again, we'll have to check both these out. Of, it reminds me of the name of the old Nautilus from Mayfair, which was sort of a similar theme. Yeah, but that game, man, blast of the past. That yeah. game had such cool pieces, oh, and the game itself was kind of, oh, It was right. okay. It was a little too long for what it was, but a neat game. So Nautilus Industries... Hopefully it does something cool with it. Legion Supplies Foretold Rise of a God. It has like one a... of those names. <laughs> like, yeah! Show me your game, mortal. It's, uh, <laughs> it's actually looks very good, and uh, it looks like a lot of game. I'll say that. It looks like there's a ton of game in there. Yeah, it doesn't look like a light game there. Oh, no, and uh, very neat artwork. Um, some character powers you are controlling different people and sending them out to work for you and it, it looks like there's a lot going on sounds interesting I, i'm gonna have to give it a look at least all right then level 99 games who i'm a big fan of because of their uh pixel tactics which you'll have pixel tactics 3 there which i had a chance to play recently although i now play pixel tactics 6 since i've added 1 2 and 3 together and it makes 6 is that right sure Okay, That's anyway, one, one you can mix them all together. They also have Cell Swords, 
which had some pretty I'm not sure cutesy if they're little artwork. That or not, or if they're demoing it. I, I he believe. said it might be right. there, and once again, uh, our caveat in all these videos is these games may or may not be there. Right, we're taking a stab at whether they are, and then there's a lot of things that are out of our and their control. But the game I'm really hoping they have is this Argent, the Consortium. I've been really looking forward to this one because it's a worker placement game where the workers have special powers. Right. And that's a concept which, to me, seems like it should have been used a long time ago. It's such a cool idea. Yeah, I, I saw it too, and then the more research I did, it also started just I started to get wide-eyed and thinking, this looks amazing. And, and I've heard fantasy, really good things about it's a it. fantasy theme, but everything works, and you can buy more spells in your trying to influence this council to kind of vote your way so it's got some sneakiness in it too it looks like a it looks like a lot of game and a nice step up from what level 99 has typically done this is actually not from Brad Halton this is from another designer Trey and Chambers and he's a dice tower fan Huzzah! and I think it's the first time this year that level 99 has is putting out games from other designers. Cell Swords and Argent are both from other designers, and both look great. It's it's. Well, Brad is a very good designer, though. Yeah. It's not like he's not a bad. He's like, oh, fine. No, I mean, I'm excited. I'm really excited about this. And he said that he has more games than the pipeline from other designers. That's great. Lookout Games, which is probably going to be in the Mayfair booth or near the Mayfair booth, since Lookout Games is now owned by Mayfair. They have two new games, Gold Ahoy and Johari. Neither one of these, to clarify, is designed by Uwe Rosenberg. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, I guess Caverna going to be there. Yeah, you but, know what? Caverna no. wasn't even on the list. No. I don't think Caverna is going to be at Gen Con. Really? You think so? Uh, I don't know. Mayfair, get that in print. Get it in print. I know Gold Ahoy might throw people off because it's from Clemens Franz, the artwork is, and it looks just like... Um, the Agricola two-player game. I mean, if you look at it kind of quickly, you'll be like, wait, what? And it says for two players in big yellow letters across the bottom. And, but it's basically a tile-laying game, a really simple one, in which you are laying tiles that have waterways or land with treasure on it. And at the end of the game, you're hoping to have more of that treasure end up flowing to you than to your opponent. So if it has more exits towards your side than your opponent's side, you win that treasure. Very simple game, tile lane. You can never play on your opponent's side. You always have to grow towards you. So that's an interesting little twist. But yeah, light. Interesting, but really light. Then finally, our last L company is Looney Labs. And they'll have a pile of their stuff. I don't know that they've ever displayed at Gen Con before. I don't think so. Because they were a big Origins exhibitor right, right. for the longest time. You'll know them because you'll see them wearing white lab coats. And tie-dye shirts. <laughs> um, but they have a new Flux version, regular show Flux, based on the web series, right, the regular show. And they might have some more stuff, some of their pyramid sets. I'm still waiting till they have the, the reprint of um, Zendo, which was going to be called. Zendo with an X. With an X, that's right. Making it impossible for us to say it without having to say Zendo with an X all the time. Yeah. All right. So we're up. We're almost halfway through the alphabet, but we're way for more than halfway done with the games. So if you're going to make a game company, pick a company that's from M to Z. You have more room to grow. Anyway, we'll be back in our next episode, starting with M's. Until then, I'm Tom Vassell. Z Garcia. And you've been watching The Dice Tower. Thanks so much for watching The Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.